Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology which we are doing from medium robins hum blood vessels ki pathology study kar rahe and we are talking about various forms of vasculitis and today's topic is going to be polyarteritis nodosa which is also a non infective type of uh, vasculitis also abbreviated as PAN polyarteritis nodosa okay now polyarteritis nodosa is a systemic vasculitis so this would simply mean that it is going to affect multiple blood vessels of your body okay particularly a small or medium sized muscular artery so those blood vessels are the main target for polyarteritis nodosa maine pehle bhi aapko bataya ki whenever you are studying vasculitis one of the first and initial things that you must know is the fact ki kaun si blood vessels affect hoti hain kis particular arteritis se okay so this inflammation of the blood vessel is going to affect primarily small and medium sized vessels it typically involves renal blood vessels and visceral blood vessels and it spares the pulmonary circulation so ye jo dekhen bold mein likha hai start mein this is all super important information because polyarteritis nodosa if you have like uh, uh, you know involvement of the lungs that uh, will give you a hint that probably uh this is not going to be polyarteritis nodosa because characteristically uh aisa nahi hai ki rule of thumb hai aur 100% aisa hi hota hai but in many of the times uh, this is a hint that if there is lung involvement it's not pan okay because pan mein lung involvement usually nahi hoti it's uh, mostly renal vessels or other vessels uh, which are supplying the viscera okay there is no association with ankhas this is another important point anka association bilkul nahi hai so if you in the clinical question in the exam jo vinet diya jata hai question ka you know ground set karne ke liye usme agar ankas ki association hai so again you kind of rule this out okay however one third of the patient have chronic hepatitis b infection so there is strong association with hep b infection which leads to the formation of impure complexes containing hepatitis b antigen that deposit in the affected vessel so that's the kind of pathogenesis how does that happen so hep b infection and that happens in one third of the patient which means about 33% of the patients okay so there are antigen antibody complexes which are then affecting the blood vessels where deposit ho jate hain complexes and the cause is unknown in the remaining cases yani takriban 67 66% cases mein polyarteritis nodosa ki koi pathogenesis ab tak identified nahi hai okay so that was very important morphologically um, classic polyarteritis nodosa is a segmental transmural necrotizing inflammation this is something which you must know main hamesha morphology ka jab section hum kar rahe hote hain to ye baat batata hu ki morphology mein there must be Uh, you know points which you must remember you have to study the morphology section isme sari cheeze bahut zyada high yield nahi hoti hain aur aasani se samajh mein bhi nahi aati but the point is ki aapki koshish ye honi chahiye ki jo important points hain wo miss na ho jaye so for example this is an important point ki ye segmental transmural segmental transmural ka matlab ye hai ki if this is the blood vessel which is affected by polyarteritis nodosa to iski full length affected nahi hoti ye wala part affected hoga phir ye part theek hoga phir ye part affected hoga ye theek hoga is tarah so this is called segmental transmural ka matlab ye hai ki tamam layers affected hongi samajh mein aa rahi baat and necrotizing inflammation so that part is going to be dead to ye pura word aapko samajh mein aana chahiye and we have already discussed ki small to medium sized blood vessels affect hoti hain particularly supplying to the kidneys and other viscera such as gi tract lesions usually involve only part of the vessel circumference and have predilection for branch points branching point space is important impaired uh perfusion may lead to ulcerations because yahan main aapko bataya na this is necrotizing so there can be ulcers and even bleeding and hemorrhage and all those sort of thing weakening of the arterial walls is also associated in the acute phase there is transmural mixed inflammatory infiltrate containing of neutrophils as well as lymphocytes and uh, this is accompanied by fibrinoid necrosis ye main aapko already general pathology mein karwa chuka hu so uh, there are some important points which you should remember about polyarteritis nodosa morphology okay that's a diagram we don't expect you to understand the whole diagram but anyways um the, this is basically to show you the you know involvement of various uh, layers in the blood vessel and then inflammatory infiltrate but in examination we don't really expect you to identify polyarteritis nodosa based on the histopathology okay so get a bit of relief there ke is tarah ke questions exam mein usually nahi dete ho sakta hai image dein aur image dekhe aapko bata dein ki this is an image from polyarteritis nodosa patient aur fir usse associated question ho to once you identify this you will understand ki kya jawab dena hai okay clinical feature 
polyarthritis nodosa is primarily a disease of young adults and uh, it can actually uh, happen in any age group most commonly it happens in young adults okay the clinical course typically is episodic yani issues honge phir theek hoga phir honge phir theek hoga episodic clinical um, you know course the clinical course typically is episodic with long term symptom free intervals so there are symptoms then symptom free interval there are symptoms symptom free interval the systemic findings are malaise fever weight loss they are all non specific and they are very much linked to general inflammation because uh, malaise fever ye kisi bhi inflammatory condition mein hota okay and therefore they are very non specific a classic presentation involves um, you know some combination of rapidly accelerating hypertension due to renal artery involvement abdominal pain bloody stools and maybe gi lesion such as ulcers bleeding per rectum this sort of thing so because we know that polyarthritis nodosa typically involve renal vasculature it may lead to hypertension so previously the person was fine and now suddenly developing hypertension along with all these symptoms you should think of polyarthritis nodosa so renal symptoms such as hypertension along with gi symptoms uh, you should think about pan if untreated pan is typically very fatal because i told you this is necrotizing inflammation so ye jo blood vessel hai iski jo walls hain they are being necrosed ulceration inflammation so that can be typically fatal okay however with immunosuppression five year survival is very much close to 80% so if you treat this outcomes are good relapses can occur in up to 25% of the cases and you, know, you treat the person and the treatment modality most of the time um, available is the immunosuppression okay and if you treat them then uh, many of them are okay but there are relapses this is dobara aa jati hai more often in non hbv associated cases than uh, those with hbv so if somebody is identified with hbv and pan and you treat them inka relapse rate kam hai okay the later have a better long term prognosis so having hbv infection if there is a patient with pan is kind of a good news because prognosis is good relapse is low and treatment works very very well so that's all that you have to remember about polyarthritis nodosa in the next video we'll talk about another uh, you know inflammatory condition of blood vessel which is kawasaki disease so till then take care of yourself i'll see you very soon in the next video subscribe to dr asif lectures my name is professor asif qureshi take care